Hello everyone, welcome to the Adoran region. I am your host, Adoran himself, and welcome to another challenge video. You might have noticed by the title and this whole thing on the screen that it's not a Pokemon challenge that we're doing today. Instead, I wanted to do something different, and so here we are. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe, follow, do all those things you ought to do when supporting a YouTube channel, because your support directly contributes into the shows on this channel existing. So appreciate that. Let's get into this. So I was in a mood, I guess is the best way to describe it, and I wanted to play a, a specific game that brought back memories of uh, nostalgia, as you were. And for me, this game, Mario Golf Advance Tour for the Game Boy Advance, is that game for me. There are, considering the, the length of the game and the amount of things to do in the game, I have put in way too many hours considering the storyline and the, the quick games and all that sort of stuff and wanted to do a challenge for that itself. So we're going to try to beat the game while staying as a level one character. And we'll talk about the story a little bit. This is a fun little scene, little sequence here, where if you switch back and forth between the characters as you're making the character select, it gets this guy very angry, which I find funny. Anyway, uh, so let's get into it. First, of course, we need to pick a character themselves. Now, the male and female characters, Neil and Ella respectively, are actually slightly different to start off with. I just picked randomly. I ended up with Ella. Uh, you can see there the stats uh, basically describing various aspects, the height of a swing, the spin control, and other aspects like that, all in the goal of being the best golfer in the universe. And in fact, while we're getting into the actual sequence, let's talk a little bit about the story of the game itself. Obviously, spoilers for the story, though it's not a particularly um, in-depth, advanced, plot-driven story. It's more of just, you know, your classic bunch of tournaments that you've got to defeat in order to be the best golfer of all time. So, the four of us on the screen right here, Ella and Helen at the top, Neil and Buzz at the bottom, are golfers that have been training under the former pro Kid, who's going to show up on the screen sooner or later. He's actually the protagonist of the game before this, which was the GameCube game. I think it's Mario Golf Toadstool Tour? That might be right. Something, something Toadstool-related. Um... But that's Kid, he's actually the protagonist of that game. He has some sort of injury, I think that's what it is, an injury that prevents him from being able to play, and so he goes to training uh, specific students, aka us, and he's also going to go back and eventually rise back up the ranks as he returns to golf form. But our goal is simple. We are able to play both singles and doubles golf, and our goal is to win all of the tournaments available. Now. In singles and doubles, respectively, in the main storyline, there are four different tournaments. There is the Marion, the Palms, the Dunes, and the Lynx, each one scaling up in difficulty and scope and all of that sort of stuff. Our goal, in both singles and doubles, get first place in all of those tournaments. Pretty straightforward. Now, in this itself, we're going to be playing singles golf by ourselves. That's just single person golf. This is what you see in the real world when it comes to golf and doubles golf. Doubles golf where we switch back and forth between our partner and our own set of skills as we try to again complete the course as quickly as possible. So the partner that we'll get is Neil who is the second person on the screen right there with the blonde hair. This is one of those weird like Pokemon things where I'm pretty sure the hair is blonde but also like the main character in Ruby Sapphire Emerald looks like they have white hair but they actually don't. That's just their hat. Anyway, um, Kid out here is like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna start back up. We're gonna become the greatest of all times. Singles golf. Let's pair them up to doubles and singles. Neil and me. Uh, I nickname myself A, but that is Ella. If I refer to myself as Ella at any point, that is the character with the red clubs there. Um, we're gonna go start off our journey. There's not a lot of exposition. There's not a bunch of lore here. We're just gonna go through each of the tournaments as we get set to become the champion. And of course, we're doing this as level one now. For those of you that have played the game, you might be wondering if I take advantage of other things like uh, different bottles to boost our own strength and able to hit farther, or uh, level up mushrooms, I think, that exist here, the special clubs. None of that. We are sticking with basic clubs. There's a bunch of advancements that you can make by finding random tickets heading to a specific shop where you can get better clubs. Each of them either adding like distance or better control or more spin or stuff like that. None of that. We're sticking with basics. And in fact, we're going to start off with our singles tourney here. What I was thinking in mind when playing through this was going through the singles tourney because each of the Marion stuff is designed so that you can beat it at level one since you could start with any of them. 
wanted to start off with that, give the experience to my doubles partner, which is, we'll see that a little bit later, and then hopefully make it that much easier to do the doubles one. So the hardest stuff is going to be the later uh, singles tourneys, you know, the dudes and the links respectively. When it comes to golf in the game itself, it's pretty straightforward. Use the A and B buttons to fill up the bar to the respective power level that you want. There is power shots as well. There's backspin and forward spin. All of this can be explained otherwise. In this first case, we get par. You can see the scoreboard here. I won't show that all the time, but I'll show the first couple of holes here. Uh, if you get a little nice shot like that, it's a nice shot, obviously. It means that you basically went to the distance that you wanted, that little uh, number that shows up on the bar there for distance. If you can accurately hit that and get good control, you get better distance and better play. Um, if you get a nice shot on a power shot, you save it. If Otherwise, you don't. You know, Auto shots are there as well, where if you don't want to control it, you can let the computer randomly generate a control level based on the power that you want. And from here, another birdie. Again, this is... A pretty easy course as well. In fact, if you're not familiar with golf, most holes are par 3, 4, or 5, basically saying this is how many strokes it's supposed to take for you to get into the hole. Uh, if you do better than that, then those are birdies and eagles and albatrosses. If you're worse than that, bogeys, double bogeys, triple bogeys, etc. On the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see the scorecards. I'll be posting that throughout the entirety of this run as well if you just want to look at that. Um, and you can see we're pretty good. Again, this course is designed for you to be able to beat it at level one. So unsurprisingly, we're doing pretty well. I also have put way too many hours in this game, so I'm pretty good at it, uh, which is why this looks even easier than you might be thinking. You can see as well, uh, rain is the other weather, weather condition that exists. There's both right, this clear weather and there's rain. There's also wind that can be a factor as well. Rain makes it harder to putt, makes it a little bit harder for distance shots and other things like that. It just makes things a little bit shorter than you might expect. Strategy is pretty simple. You can see another rain hole here uh, where usually my strategy, and you'll see this throughout the entire run, it's me super top speeding as much as I can to just get as much distance as I can because that's going to be the biggest issue when it comes to playing through this game is that sooner or later distance is going to become a struggle. But trying to get as much distance as we can, I use the super backspin shot a lot when I get in the green to try to chip it in. Um, you can see, I think this one is an example of that. We've jumped to hole 15, by the way. Uh, going forward, I'll probably show the first hole, the last hole, and then any interesting holes that are in between. Uh, par 15, or not par 15, hole 15, for example, is a, an example, I think, where I'm able to, to chip it in from the rough here. Uh, take that nice shot right there, backspin it, bam, birdie. Uh, and we're, we're, we're cruising through this. Here's another, uh, another good hole here on hole 17. It's a par 3. So it's short, the par threes are the ones where we'll be most likely to take advantage of because everybody's dealing with the shortness. Um, another chip in right there, and we continue from there. You can see the scoreboard, we're at minus 13, next best is at plus two. I mean, we are cruising through this. Um, and you can see the final hole right here, another par five now with better control, longer distances, and other factors like that. You can cut across the pond because I don't have that. I'm with the basic clubs. I'm not particularly strong. I'm still level one. We're going to have to go around like the old fashioned way. But an auto shot here gets us pretty close. And from here, we can just put it in for birdie, cleaning us up with a minus 14, easily taking the victory. Uh, I'll scroll through this. Sometimes I do this and later on, I forget. But we'll go through each of the leaderboards here, and you'll also see the scorecard again on the bottom right hand side of the screen. But we cruised through this. This was pretty straightforward. Shockingly, with a minus 14, the greatest score since Tiger Woods, we're able to succeed. With experience here, this is where I'm able to stay at level one. I just give everything to my partner and let them boost up. I did not bother looking into if you could just eliminate experience altogether, because I was worried those were going to turn into like, oh, let's just automatically turn you into level 100. So instead, I've decided to just part make my partner as good as possible because this AI I don't know if it's notoriously known for this, but for me, the AI can be really, really good or really, really bad. Anyway, first place here, there's a bunch of post-game stuff and extra stuff. We actually beat the, the high score, uh, get a bunch of these extra holes that don't particularly matter for the story, but there's a cool like quick game and bonus game content. And one championship is in the books. I think at this point, I was maybe 45 minutes into recording. I'm not even sure if that's the case, but we were cruising. Um, not only do we have to beat all of the tournaments as well, but we can beat each of the course leaders, the, the course masters, as you will, in match play. So basically, match play is where each person, you and your opponent, in this case, we're going off against Joe, 
you and your opponent are basically doing a battle of holes. So the first hole, who's the best? Winner of that one gets advantage to go first on the second hole, and each hole is its own little match. So you can see here, us versus Joe. Joe is trying to get into the hole the same time as we are. Um, in fact, uh, unsurprisingly, because again, this is another thing you can do at level one, so it's something that is pretty easy to do because you're able to compete against both the the match, the, the course leader or the actual tournament itself uh, at any order. So in this case, since on that hole we did better than Joe, we get a point here. Um, you'll notice that the, the bars on the screen right now isn't as big as the bar on the right hand side. If you tie at any point, then it switches from taking off an extra medal at the end that you need to win and then not. Uh, there's, I, I, it is too much for me to explain mathematically wise, but it does work out at the end. Um, here's another example. The reason why I'm showing this hole is the disadvantages when it comes to match play that we'll be experiencing going forward. Distance is going to quickly become an issue. Already Joe is generally a stronger character. I didn't show the, the stats here, but when you beat them, you unlock them for quick game purposes and mini game stuff. Uh, and you can see their general strength levels. Joe's, I, I believe, already stronger than I will be, because uh, I think my, my, my default strength is 200 yards for a max distance, and Joe's, I think, is like 210. So it's already going to be an issue, and longer holes are where we're going to have much more of a trouble. Because any mistakes that the AI will make, they can cover up by having longer distances. So you can see here, uh, I need to take full advantage of the putt. Um, I'm uh, this one here. I'm, I struggle immensely when it comes to like the greens and the hills and stuff on the greens itself. So uh, because of that, we end up tying here and the, in this hole, getting a par for both of us. And what that does, you can see at the end here, it actually chops off that final medal that we need to win. Again, to all balance it out. If you make it to the end of the course and a winner hasn't been decided, then I think there are like a, it's like a like sudden death effectively. So, you know, you go through the first hole again, the second hole until somebody wins a hole. And this one here, uh, another par five course, it's again showing off the fact that distance is going to quickly become an issue here. When they're on their point, when they are good, they are very good. This one, slight advantage I have, not only do power shots help, uh, the AI is not very good at remembering they have the ability to do power shots, uh, but not only are power shots very good for me, but because of the styling of the distance, we can actually get into decent position. These holes, again, very flat, very easy to work with. And so as a result, we're able to get on this hole our very first and very rare, we won't get too many of these, an eagle, which is very exciting. And that obviously ends up winning us this match up here. Let's jump over to hole number eight now, the par three right here. You'll notice as well, we're playing on the front tees as opposed to the back tees, the red tees as opposed to the blue ones. The blue ones are designed for uh, tournament play. The front ones, the red ones are designed for match play. It's an easy mode versus hard mode thing in this game. Uh, in this situation here, the birdie putt for both of us is going to go in, and as a result, we'll actually be um, tying in this one here. Because of where we are in this set, uh, we, it doesn't actually knock off the edge one, if, you, if that makes any sense. It doesn't knock off a metal. It switches back and forth between the two. Let's jump over to hole nine now, uh, another high speed, top speed situation moving on from here into the semi-rough. Again, Joe is able to keep distance with us, and this is already, the, he is supposed to be a level one beatable character. So the fact that this is the case here means that the masters of the Lynx, the Dunes, and later courses, that's gonna be that much more difficult to actually defeat. In this situation here though, through the power of raw backspin, which is, I, I abuse the spin moves uh, a lot, mainly because that's how I found myself winning. He's actually able to chip it in here, which means that I have to make this shot in order to keep our, uh, our possibilities alive. It does, and you see there on that hole, it actually does cut off the, uh, the metal, because again, the previous one it didn't. Hopefully this makes sense. There's a mathematical formula behind it that probably isn't too complicated, but also my, my brain isn't set for math right now, so we can get started. Uh, we can get continuing with that. Another thing as well um, that might be interesting to note, you see how Joe on the little golf ball on the bottom right hand side of the main screen, uh, sometimes that moves around. That's designed to add a little bit of spin to the ball in other directions. So you can make a distance a little bit farther or make it curve a little bit to the left or right. I rarely use that because I'm very bad at using that. Uh, but the AI you'll see using that constantly. Um, though obviously in putting it doesn't really matter in that case. Terrible putt there by Joe. We get the birdie on this shot here. 
And from there, it leads us to hole number 11. One more hole to win. Again, on these match place courses, similar to the tournaments itself, I'll show the first hole, the last hole, and then anything in between that I found particularly interesting. This one being available here kind of implies that we win. Also, the giant fact that I spoil the answer on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Um, but yeah, smooth sailing from here. Uh, another thing to note as well in this game is just uh, the, the the fact that when you when you battle against people, uh, battle, yeah, because these are like Pokemon battles. You see, I have the terminology still stuck in my head. Uh, when you go up against other people in both the tournament play and in match play, the better you do, I believe, the more experience you actually get. Uh, so if you're able to win, like in this case, we won, what is that, 8-0 uh, we ended up winning at, that gives more experience than had you won 2-0 against Joe or any other opponent, for example. Uh, from here, a power putt for Joe fails somehow. That was a terrible play by Joe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sugarcoat that one. A birdie for us gives us the win on this one, and we win this match up here. We won 8 up, and as a result, we get experience. Again, not a lot, but it's something nevertheless. And we're going to boost up Neil's stats as well. I won't show this all the time, but in case you want to keep an update. Joe's been added to the character select screen. I just showed that, so we add that little star next to Joe's name on the bottom, and that's the Marion course completely done. From here, it's time to go to the next one, to the Palms. This is the only course where I did things backwards, and I'm not sure why, but I did it that way anyway. So rather than doing the Palms tourney itself, we're gonna go up against the Palms master, uh, right over here, going up against Sherry. This one, surprisingly, I think looking back at hindsight, we did even better. Uh, not sure why, but we ended up winning this one 9-0, uh, which is very exciting. I think it prob this probably was a sign uh, when that first shot, A, wasn't with the, the main wedge, wasn't with the one wedge, it was with the three wedge, and also terrible power, poor accuracy. Like, it was a, a rough first hit from Sherry in general. While meanwhile, we've had multiple great shots that get us nearby the hole. Smooth sailing, I think, from this point going forward. Even here, though, you can start to see the distance becoming a factor. Sherry is able to get all the way back up and save par. While we're able to get the birdie, and while the match score is particularly good, if you're not great with the control aspect of this game, you know, the, the making sure you hit that, like, uh, red slash blue little bar there that we hit right there uh, where the AV is. If you're not very good at getting good control, then this challenge becomes significantly more complicated. Uh, it'd be interesting, and I might, if uh, people want to watch that, do an auto-only challenge where I just let luck decide, uh, which would be fitting considering one of the biggest challenges I've done is the metronome-only challenge, which, yeah, it could be fun. Luck has played a significant role in this channel, uh, both in growth perspective and in... Uh, the stylings of videos. So it'd be interesting to look at nevertheless. If you'll notice as well, in the Palms course itself, we've just jumped a whole 10 by the way. Uh, if you notice as well, the wind is picked up a little bit in the Marion course, as Sherry's able to chip that one in. In the Marion course, winds were usually in the low single digits, now they're in the higher single digits. The dunes will have even more, the links will have even more than that. This is a dormy hole. A dormy hole is when you can win the match, it's match point basically. You can win either by winning this particular hole or tying it. Because tying what it's going to do, it's telling you basically, tying the hole is going to cut off that final um, final medal that needs to be won, which will mean that you actually end up winning. In this particular case, you can do the math. I believe we win this hole. Another poor shot by Sherry. It was a lot of those. Uh, we end up succeeding in this as well. If you want to see all of the different holes and all of the matches and everything like that, all the action that was done, you can actually do so. What I've done, you can check this in the description below, it might be in a card on the top of your screen or something like that. What you can actually do is go over to my other channel, the Adoran Region Stream Vault, which is basically both where I post streams and also just long videos to explain things. You can go over to that channel and actually check out the entire video. It's sped up, but you can check the entire video, check all the holes and everything and see how the plays went. The good sh the strokes I made that I show on this page as well, or the bad ones that I've uh, famously or purposely left out just to make me look that much better. You can check that out if you'd like. Again, in the card, in the description, um, somewhere else maybe, I don't know, uh, as long as I remember. From here, quick shot, Sherry added to our uh, checklist here. Azalea is next once we get to the dunes part, but next thing we wanna do is head over to the Palms Tourney now, and we play from the back tees instead. So, from here, let's jump on in. Again, there's not much uh, in terms of like plot. It's more of just fun little like story, be story beats that you can hit. Uh, 
And we've seen some of these holes as well. Again, I'll show the first, the last one, any interesting ones from here. Power shots carry. We get our best drive there. Uh, as we get better distance, better power, better situations, it makes things that much easier for us as well. While um, I'm not gaining any experience, the fact that this is later in the recording session, you'll, you'll notice this, I think, later on. You can tell when I've started a new recording session from when I you know, am going off of multiple hours of recording because early recording session stuff, my accuracy is terrible. Later recording session stuff, I get holes like this, which is fantastic. Back to back, nice shots, high top spin, doing good work here. Here's a rare instance actually, where I do end up using the little golf ball technique here, uh, trying to move the shots around, taking advantage of the wind and all of those factors to try to curve it. Uh, you can see how the, the accuracy itself, I can make it so that it's slightly better. I'm, again, really bad at this. I can only do this well and consistently when I use auto power. Uh, if you're very good with uh, keystrokes and or button strokes, I guess, uh, then you can actually do this, you know, by adding the manual power, adding top spin and back spin and all those factors. I'm not good at that. So, you know, I'm stuck with auto. I think I, later on I'd end up doing this once. So, um, on, you know, the rare good luck there. On hole 15 here, it's a par three. Backspin away, get into the rough from here. Uh, the chip in king strikes again, getting that top spin there as we move on forward. At this point, we're running things right now. We're at minus 10 at that particular hole. Sherry is in second place with a minus one. So we are cruising. Hole 18 as well is a straightforward, quite literally straightforward course. Just gotta get to the hole from here. Backspin over, smooth shot from here. I think I'm a little cocky at this point. Uh, I think I try to like do this little shot here. I could have probably put that in from the green if I wanted to, but I didn't go in for par. And we end up with a minus 12, Sherry in second place at par even. Uh, you can also notice if you recognize some of the names here, those people that are on our team, you know, Neil, uh, what was name? Helen, Buzz, they show up on this list as well, but you know, they're not very good. In fact, we, the most of the, you know, as long as you can get under par, I think more often than not, you end up succeeding. First place to the spoils here, that's our second trophy in the books. We are collecting trophies like we are for Jack Milkelson or Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy or Bryson DeChambeau. Does he? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not too familiar with real golf. Uh, and from here, we go on to the dunes section now. The dunes, unsurprisingly, you can see all the cacti here. While the Marion course is standard and the palms is on the beach with a lot of, a lot of waves and oceans, uh, this is the desert. Winds are now in the low, uh, low double digits at this point. Uh, 13 mile per hour wind here, a perfect example. Distances are farther. And there's a bunch of cactus, cacti, cacti, that are in the way trying to block off your path. So it's gonna be slightly more complicated from here. As well, you can notice as well, the greens are becoming slightly more complicated, more hills and other things. From here, we actually put that one in from outside, which is very nice. Making things more and more complicated as we move forward, you know, unsurprisingly. On this hole, on par six, this one's an actually pretty interesting one. First off, winds are going backwards. That's never a good sign. Uh, and we get stuck behind a cactus here, which is never fun. Uh, when you're right behind it, this is the worst spot to be in. When you're right behind it, and you gotta figure this out. So I'm, I'm out here doing math, trying to figure out, okay, how can I get the distance without what I need? Let's auto power the tier. Let's see if we can switch it, you know, get in between those two cacti. We're good, we're in the waste area. This is already an issue in and of itself. The wind is causing an issue. We gotta try to luck, luck our way into this backspin a little high, but line it up perfectly. I have gotten, after 3,000 hours of gameplay into this over the course of 10 years, uh, I've gotten very good at doing the backspin into the hole. That's usually my strategy, however successful it can be. Zooming through, we go straight over to uh, hole 18 at this point, and it's smooth sailing of, of this. You can see in the bottom of the screen, there was a, a what is that, a, 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 an eight hole stretch where I got a bird, where birdie after birdie after birdie, ending this off with a minus 13. Everybody else, again, nowhere close. Uh, if you're playing this game, if you can get in the, uh, if you can get under par, you get a good shot of getting at least on the trophy stand. If you can get really far under par, you get first place, like you do here. Another trophy in the books, another opportunity here. It's been smooth sailing for the most part, Part of that is because of experience, and part of that is because uh, we're, you know, we're, 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 doing, we're doing well, using good strategies, taking advantage of the wind, backspin, and all those other factors. And now it's time to face the club leader here, match play time with Azalea. 
another matchup success here. You can see already, though, this is a good opportunity to notice this. First off, this power is just poor in general. Um, but you'll notice in this play itself, Azalea, look at this distance. Full, and I didn't have max power, of course, but Azalea, top spinning here, in the rough, still roughly par with where I am, which is not a good sign. And Azalea, though they are the, uh, she's the, the, the match leader, uh, the course leader for the Dunes, uh, she's not the strongest one of the Dunes. We'll meet the other, the real strongest character, one of my favorite characters in this game, a um, little bit later. Uh, right now we're playing singles though, moving over here. Uh, luckily, our straight shot opportunities here gave us a look we needed to get the birdie. Uh, but this one, though I don't show it all the time, is a lot more difficult than the previous two. I think you could easily, even if you have no experience, you could beat Joe at level one. It's designed to do so. I'm, a couple attempts, you can probably get that. Sherry at level one, again, with no experience coming in, you could probably do that in a couple attempts. Azalea is a little bit hard. Again, lots of experience here. She's already catching up to us in distance. We don't have a good spot at this point. We gotta basically hope our power can push it. I'm trying to use everything I can by hitting it from the bottom of the ball to add a couple of yards here. There's no wind, which is a good thing. Auto it, roll it, see if we can get there. We just stretch it out over the rough there. Meanwhile, Azalea is deciding, you know what, what if I just raw power it in between and, and, and she's able to do so, you know, easy money there for her. Uh, another shot here, this one, gonna see if we can do our old strategy, the backspin into the net here. Bingo, got it. Eagle shot there. Azalea has to make a shot here. Is this gonna work? Oh no, she's very good, is what we're learning right now. And that cuts off one of the holes at the end. Jumping over to hole seven now, an 11 mile per hour wind here. Again, this is, I am in the prime of my recording time, but it's nice shot after nice shot after nice shot. And we are just literally trying to Hulk smash this golf ball as far as we can. Well, Azalea is like calmly, coolly, collectly doing exactly what she needs to do. Another good shot right here, just right outside of the green. Our next one here, because we're actually in this weird poor rough area, uh, right there, and the, I think that's a semi-rough, uh, because we're there, it's actually gonna be difficult for us and we could bounce right behind this cactus. Luckily, the, the hole is on the right side of the green. If it was on the left side, we'd basically have to try to, you know, go backwards. We're able to do another chip in shot here. Azalea, this time, will she be able to do it? Unfortunately, a little bit too far to the left there. Jumping over to hole nine now, this one's a fun hole because the easy thing to do if by this point, you are leveled up, gained a little bit of distance, is go and take that little island in the middle there, thus making this par five more like a par four. I don't have that power, so I have to go around. Azalea also, I don't know why. Again, this is the AI being the AI. If they had the power, if they remembered they had the power function, they could just use that and then lock themselves into that island area, but you know, going around it. We're gonna use the island here on our second stroke. See if we can get right in between the cacti. We're able to do so, though, on the rough. And then, usual strategy here, trying to see if we can bounce on the rough to be able to get into the green, get stuck in the bunker, uh, which doesn't happen a lot for us, but it does happen in this situation here. Azalea, a, a poor shot right there, poor control and attack in general. Um, moving over to the backspin shot here on their fourth stroke. Our fourth stroke here, we're gonna see if we can take another backspin situation here. The strategy, pretty straightforward. Bingo, we're able to do so. That wins us another medal here. Jump over to hole 10 now. Big wind going straight. So we just literally smash this ball, see how far we can get it. It's 206 yards, which is, at this point in the game, not very impressive. Regular Azalea max shot bounces past 206 yards. Uh, as you can see, things are getting slightly more complicated. A backspin shot here, trying to see if we can take advantage of the wind, gets us a little bit farther than we'd like. We're on this weird, we're on the slanty area of the green. Meanwhile, Azalea, another good shot here. Unfortunately, though, not high enough to get past that little mini hill. Leads into this next shot. Now we go over for par. Long shot here. Just edges, but misses the hole. We can sink to win here. If we're able to do so, got to move a little bit. Unfortunately, not able to get that first shot, but the par shot does give us the win here on this particular hole. One more hole left to go. It's a par three, 11 mile per hour wind. Gonna go for another backspin, a classic. Basically puts us right next to the hole here. Azalea gonna have to basically win. They have to win at this point. They tie eventually, it's gonna catch up to them. Rough shot here leading into the semi-rough. 
uh, the sand wedge gets them close in the green the par putt is going to be good here for azalea but we have the birdie putt to win this particular matchup and we are successful we've won another match in the books 418 experience points neil must be thinking i've been putting in weights because all of a sudden i wake up and i'm level 20 at this point I, I i've been playing poorly my average game is like a plus seven and somehow able to do you know how do somehow i'm level 20 which is surprising meanwhile l is out here collecting rings on rings on rings and still uh level one which is very fun it's fun when one person gets uh does all the work and everybody else gets all the credit. You know, it's a, it's a joy. It's time for the final tourney, and this is my uh, most favorite and least favorite at the same time. First off, the links are weird. They've got giant winds. You can see 20 mile per hour winds. This is going to be the norm going forward. And if it's going backwards, it is not helping at all. The best drive to a standing. Second thing, you'll notice those weird little like stripey patterns on the green. Those are like fast areas. If you if your ball bounces on that, your ball zooms. You'll see that in the later hole. Uh, gonna luckily here in this situation, we're able to get this birdie shot. We're gonna need to collect as many of those as we can because kid does not play around. We'll move on to the par four here. We are again not even close to the area that we want to be. 18 mile per hour wind, like it's a a normal Tuesday. Uh, as we move on to this next shot here, another best try, which is fun. Uh, gonna jump over it. Again, the, the fast areas are helpful unless they're not, because a lot of times the fast areas are designed so that you hit that boost in distance and then run into the heat, which is those little like green patches that you'll see. Uh, this one was just a great job. I'm not even sure how I did that, but you'll, you'll see these green uh, patch, or not green, sorry, the orange patches there. Um, we'll probably run into one of those sooner or later. I'm very bad at uh, avoiding those. And they are terrible. You can barely get the ball out. The ball doesn't go like 60, 70 yards on your best day. Control is really poor. You got to be really accurate. Again, we'll sh probably see one of those. We'll see another bunker though. That's always fun. Par five or par four shot here on the fifth hole as we're trying to basically collect as many birdies as we can before we inevitably mess up, backspin our way into things. This is where I, you know, I'm, I'm taking full advantage of these opportunities when I can. Uh, par 3 here, a 212-yard uh, shot here, just an auto power, big win, bouncing it up, and I get a hole-in-one. Yeah, don't know how I did that, but I'm not I'm not looking to gift horse in the mouse, and that's uh, gift horse in the mouse? In the mouth. Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, not looking that in, uh, in the mouth, and we're going to see here the backspin. That's not the full power of, of, the, uh, of the fast track because I used the backspin. But we'll see that going forward. We'll show the full power of uh, the rough shot here. I thought that we were going to go into the heat for a second. This one, did I just go auto this entire hole? I'm not even sure how. Um, I, you're able to keep track of where you are in the standings, and so can take full advantage of that as we go here, get this fourth shot. It's bad. This is us playing a decent hole, and we're still getting bogeys because our distance is that poor. But we are successful, however, in being able to win this particular tournament. Again, minus 11. Next best person, I think, was like minus four. Was it Kid? The Kid loot? No, Kid won. Okay, just want to make sure. Usually, it's the course master that's uh, second place. Though, uh, look there for a second like he didn't. Anyway, um, now that we've won the Lynx tournament, we are done with the singles tournament here. In fact, there's a credit sequence that shows up at this point. Um, and then after that, you'll wake up in your bed because you've just beat the game. That's right. Beating all four of these tournaments is beating the game. We've done the singles beating the game. Neil's like, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool. This is great, exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm very bad, right, at golf. And then we we say no to try not to let them down because we still need them for the doubles. Uh, and uh, we have a little, little moment here where, before we uh, have to go and fight our boss, uh, the hardest guy in the game. No question about that. This is a little fun thing. The, uh, we can go into Peach's Castle to do the post game tournament, which in fact is not going to be in this video, the singles and doubles for that. That's going to be in tomorrow's video. We're going to do a part two for Can You Beat the Level 1 Challenge. Here we are, our boss, the, tr the best golfer of all time. No question about that. Kid is literally a step up from everybody. You can see here how close this matchup was. Because um, Kid does not play around. Look at this. First off, first hole, seven mile per hour backwards, not too bad. Get a 207 shot. Kid skips the river on a power shot, and he's not—he's you know, he, not as good as we are when it comes to like accurately using power shots. But he will not play around. That's a 284 on a power shot. He will use them if need be. Um, so yeah, 284, fantastic impact and control. Uses spin moves frequently. 
we're playing a little aggressively, too aggressively. In fact, we jump over the green, get into the red. Meanwhile, kid, calm, cool, collected, accurate shot. This ball is basically right next to the hole. We have to try to chip this in, pray that this works. It doesn't. And after our par shot here, we're doing decently well. Kid has decided not to play around. A birdie shot here gives them the first, you know, first medal already in the lead. And you can see how many holes we had to tie in order to cut down the medals, how many I had to basically get luck in. Here's where the, the, the super top spin really shows off its power. Kid's gonna show that off as well here. Uh, not great power, right? Doesn't matter, it's all part of Kid's plan. As he just zooms past a 294 yard first stroke, which is nuts. Uh, we're basically praying we can keep our power as long as we can. I'm using power shots consistently. Kid is not because he's flexing on us, because he wants to. And honestly, I can't blame him. Look at this shot here. Another bounce right over in the fairway still. Second stroke is basically a, a, you know, a locked in for a birdie. We're trying to power shot everything until we get into the right distance here. Can we hopefully chip this one in? Well, we're, we're close. This can give us a birdie shot. We have the opportunity here. What's Kid gonna do? Nice, calm, cool, collected chip and eagle. Yeah. Again, he's not playing around. This is the GOAT for a reason. We're jumping over to the later holes because somehow I got a lead. I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure how. We get over to hole 17, another par four situation. The fact that there are, there's a balanced number of holes, like there's a balanced number of par threes, fours, and fives in each of the courses. Um, so that's a, that's not too, you know, they keep that consistent. But just the, the fact that par fives are effectively dead zones for me means I really need to collect on the threes and fours that I can because par fives, the longer the hole is, the more complicated it becomes for me to win because they can take advantage of the fact that they have much better distance. And kid, I think max distance is a good 60, 70 yards better than I am, which is going to add up quickly. On this shot here, we're just lucky. Uh, kid is fully able to make these type of shots. He misses it by a few inches. We take the shot from the fringe chip it in technically speaking birdie shot here gives us the win somehow we won three up a six three win gives us the official end of the singles tournament here we will not kid for the character so it's pretty great and we've won we are now the ultimate singles golfer in the main storyline in this world and that's all i believe it is that because now that our singles journey is over it is time for the doubles journey to begin hey neil we, I've been giving you a bunch of experience, let's go. You can see the new characters on the screen, everything like that. First things first, of course, the Marion Tourney. We're gonna jump in straight into that. You've seen this course earlier in the video, you know what it's like. We're gonna go straight into this and I'll show you what this actually looks like. So, again, starting from the back hole, you can see the scores on the bottom right. Uh, doubles is significantly more complicated because you don't have complete control. So first shot, super topspin, great drive. Second shot, Neil takes it. And Neil takes it, when, when Neil takes it, that means that the AI is gonna take it. This shot, pretty good. In fact, Neil, surprisingly, in my opinion, and it might just be because of the level ups, um, for the first couple of tournaments, is actually pretty good. In fact, I make more mistakes than Neil does here. Uh, that birdie shot was fully makeable and I missed that. Uh, I will say, the AI, when it comes to getting the first shot, is terrible. When it comes to putting, is great. It's fantastic. So somehow you wanna make it so that you, if slash when you do this challenge or just play this game in the future, you wanna to try to make it so that you can get the first shot on a hole and the AI gets the last shot. And you switch back and forth. So that should be able to happen repeatedly. I make a fantastic shot there. I'm not even sure how that I did that. Um, so you wanna to try to aim it like that. In this case, perfect example, um, another hole in one. I'm gonna be honest, I am not this good. I think I, I, I've made in this entire uh, run in the entire recording session. I made more hole-in-ones or about as many as I have in my entire career uh, Which is very fun First shot there is a great one by Neil. In fact again, the, the majority of this first run was pretty good uh, AI wise the second shot was good there and Neil's third shot here again pretty good the AI likes to play to the to the game likes to play for par I think is the best way to describe it, to win for par. So if you're doing really good, the AI will start sucking. If you do really bad, the AI will start being very good. In this case, we do great. Minus 10, next best is plus five, get the hole in one and everything. And get ourselves another trophy, adding the first doubles tournament win on our listing here, adding the Marion Tourney trophy right there. 
Now, speaking of Joe's team, that's the next thing on the list. We're gonna be Joe and the guy with the blonde hair, Putts. There's a fun little sequence. I don't show it in this video because I didn't record this, but there's a fun sequence and a bunch of cool dialogue inside the clubhouse, which is where we had a little conversation with um, the trainers and pro and stuff like that. Uh, there's a section where all the doubles guys, so uh, Putts, Grace, uh, Tiny, and Gene, uh, all of them are just hanging out, vibing. Uh, and there's fun little sequences where you can walk in every now and then and be like, you know, I, you can talk to them. I'll probably make, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in doing that, is making videos of the various different type of dialogues that you can find in this game, because a lot of it is really good. And I love, I love games that have different sequences depending on when you see them. Anyway, match play. Match play is pretty straightforward. You switch back and forth between you and your partner and switch back and forth between you and the other person. Of course, depending on who is, uh, farther away. Whoever's farther, I, I don't know if I explained that earlier, whoever's farthest away from the hole gets the next shot, which is why you'll see sometimes we switch back and forth, sometimes the same person will go again and again. In this case here, we're able to tie for par, move on from here. Again, doubles with less control, the AI having more control over things, it becomes uh, slightly more complicated to win because you just have to hope that the AI is good. Again, Neil, gotta give credit where credit is due. I love ragging on the AI in this game. Neil and Amari and Torney, great. Might be because they're level 20, might be because they realize that I'm recording for a video, but the AI in this game uh, can be very hit or miss. Perfect example right here, a great shot right around the tree, rolls over, still in the fairway, perfect play by Neil here as Putz moves on for this next shot. Um, great, you know, the AI was fun because it was helpful for me and not helpful for the opponent, which is always fun. You'd like to make things that much more easier. Uh, as we get on to the third stroke here, back, uh, super backspin, trying to see if we can line this up properly, and we are able to. Backspin for Eagle, giving us another win there. Jumping to hole 11 now, it's a par 5, 419 yards, and rain, slight wins. Uh, the wins in the Marion Tourney, not too complicated. Marion Tournament, I guess. Not very complicated here. Putts, I don't know why they're going for the, the shots that don't add distance. Uh, they go like top left or top right, uh, which makes things shorter and I think slightly better for control purposes, but uh, not sure why they did that. Another shot here by Neil again, doing great, keeping us on the fairway, making shots that much easier. Putz uh, decides to go and uh, think that the bunker is the best opportunity there. Our shot here, another par 5 uh, situation here, going to try to take the backspin, able to do so, keep us close. It's a little far. The rain, I'm very bad at putting in the rain. Um, as Joe was able to salvage that hole right there, get a birdie. I'm very bad at putting in the rain. Neil, fantastic at putting in the rain. Knows exactly how much distance is needed. Another birdie here, we're able to tie this one, cut off a, a hole at the end, leading us into this final hole uh, as soon as I remember that the game is happening. Come on, come on. I would normally edit this out, but I didn't, because why not? Hole number 12 here, a backspin shot, just kind of keeping us in the green, uh, following up with a bad shot, if I remember correctly. This one like hits a tree and it's short in the rough. Yeah, it's fun. Joe tries to salvage this a little bit, able to get close, but it's already, the damage has already been done. Neil, the putting master that he is, gets us one in. Birdie for the win, giving us a seven up victory. Here as we unlock pots, which is always very fun, and giving us our star here as we unlock the next matchup. Another fun thing as well is that while the singles people like Joe and Sherry and Azalea Kid, they're all very gracious in defeat, the doubles people are not, which makes it that much funnier when you beat them. Um, because Butts is like, no, how is this possible? I can't believe I lost. And it's like, well, yeah, you're going up against two of the greatest of all time. You're going up against the greatest singles player of all time and a guy who is significantly higher level than he's supposed to be for where he is at this point. So unsurprisingly, we're able to win. Moving on now to the Palms tourney, the beach side. Gotta love it. Another, this one, somehow, I think was even better than the Marion tourney. Starts off on a great foot here, a uh, superpower shot right there. Second shot by Neil. This is always the tough part. When you're, when you're hoping for a birdie, you gotta pray that the AI is able to be good. This looks like a bad shot until that curves right into the fringe. Great placement. We're able to clean up damage here. Just let it fall on in and get that birdie to go. Jump over to hole nine now, a par four situation. Seven mile per hour win, 338 yards to go. We start off with the first shot here, getting perfectly on the fairway. Again, you gotta pray, you gotta cross your fingers. Neil, please can save us, you know, keep us good. Bouncing over, again, a little short, but doable. Second shot here, or the second shot for us here, chips in, 
from the fairway, keeping us a minus seven. Now, second place is a minus five. It becomes, you know, you gotta keep on track of things. A backspin here and another hole in one. Don't, I don't know how this is happening. I am not this good at the game, normal. I think I was just on a particular, like, hot stretch in these various stages and just right distance. Maybe it's like the fact that I have put, again, way too many hours in this game. Uh, probably don't recommend doing that unless you're making a video like this or really love this game. Or the 18th one here sneaks on right by. Par putt for Neil to clean things up. Gives us the victory here at minus 14. Next person, plus four, which is very fun. Another trophy in the books here as we get the Palms Tourney win, giving us our second championship as a duo and moving on to the next stage, the next item on our list as we go up against Sherry and Grace. Now, while we are very good, we are playing doubles, which is, to me, more complicated than singles. And I think when you add up total distances, you know, trying to get an average of the players, I think already these two are better than we are. Just because I've been trying to balance things out on Neil's side, and we're not leveling ourselves up at all, which is, in fact, why Sherry and Grace are able, even able to get a medal on us. This fully just trying to see how we're feeling. Auto shot goes for a nice shot. It seems like a good day. Again, Sherry starts off with a very, very poor first shot. I don't know why they do this. So the AI will make some extremely questionable decisions at times. That might be one of them. Um, you'll see another fun sequence later on where the AI just completely, like, brain farts, I think is the best way to describe it. Just complete why. Second shot there by Neil. Not as good as it was in the tournament, though. We're able to get this pin shot at there. They go for a chip-in attempt. Very close, but unfortunately not there yet. A par shot for us gives us a completion on this hole, and they, unsurprisingly, you know, a few feet away, are going to make this par shot. 999 times out of 1,000, they're able to make it within you know, 7, 8 feet, unless there's some extraneous circumstance, like the you're going uphill or you're in the fringe or something weird like that. Jump over to par 5, or the 5th hole here, the par 3 hole. First shot by Neil and by uh, Grace, I believe, both very good. Chip in for us is successful. Sherry's chip in shot here just misses it. And that gives us another medal win. Jump over later on to hole number 13, a par 5, 427 dormy hole situation. Nine mile per hour win going west. I sound like I'm doing a weather report. Honestly, should we go into that full mode? I think not because I'm just rambling at this point. But Moving on to, you know, continuing with this hole here, again, we have the power with Neil on our side, but he doesn't have the control, the preciseness that a human player has. The AI can make some questionable decisions sometimes. This one, not that at all. A great shot here. It hits a tree, which almost is beneficial in a way, because it keeps us in the fairway as opposed to jumping into the rough. Second shot here, or third shot here, sorry, uh, by Sherry, gets very, very close here, but we have to go for an opportunity here to see if we can either win this or get the, get the tie. We get close, backspin all the way back, but this is a dormy hole, so a birdie putt gives us a tie opportunity and wins it. As we're able to do there, Neil, again, the putting champion that he is, gives us the final medal and unlocks the next situation. Azalea and Tiny. Tiny is that character. Tiny, as you can tell, has an arm on it, and he is a jump up. He's, a, he's on par with the Lynx winners but in the dunes when it comes to distance. Uh, and we'll be able to see them up front and personal as we go over to the dunes tournament. I don't know why I walked over to the links there. There's a bunch of cool mini games and other things like that in all of these other areas. I would recommend going to those. They're, they're fun, they're different, they have you know, various styles of golf and also uh, give you experience points. All the things, there's a bunch of mini games and lessons and stuff like that that if you're successful, gets you uh, ex extra experience points, making it that much easier to win. Uh, for timing purposes, and also because I played this way too much, I didn't decide not to, you know, I decided not to go for that. But again, if you somehow find yourself playing this game, uh, either buying it on secondhand markets or you've got it lying around, go for those mini games. Those are really, really fun. There's one that's not, and I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to say, do not play the Elf Short Course. This was a very underwhelming in terms of action tournament there. You saw the first hole, nothing too surprising. 18th hole here, nothing too surprising. Again, the AI has been very good. This one, we don't have a single bogey situation. Uh, it's all pars or uh, birdies. We're not good enough 
arm-wise, like we as the main character, uh, Ella and slash A aren't good enough to get to into the uh, get into uh, evil albatross situations regularly. We putted through the rough on that one, which is very fun. Both about the highlights, those and Chippins are about the highlights of what we can do, and are able to again win this Dunes tourney here. Another trophy in the books. It seems easy. I trust you. Trust me. It is not that easy. And in fact, this, I again, is another situation of like, oh, this is much more complicated than you think. Tiny comes along. Guy looks like uh, he's been weightlifting every single moment of his life, um, which you'll see very quickly on Tiny's shots uh, sooner or later. Tiny and Azalea are able to get a couple of medals off of us that we are successful. This first hole here gets us behind a cactus, which is not a good sign. Azalea's first shot, gonna go right, th look at that, look at that. Right in the fairway, right past the cactus, lined up perfectly. Neil's gotta figure out a way around this, and somehow does. Uh, curves it, gets in the bunker, though, you know, I did not give him a good place in there, so shout outs to him. Tiny, we don't see the full power that Tiny has in this shot, though, uh, which is unfortunate. I wanna see, did I, did I leave a hole in where Tiny was going all out? Because Tiny's distance, again, is like, like, like Link's level, Link's leader levels there. Uh, get our third shot pretty close. Birdie shot here, very far distance as Yelly just tries to get close here. Par putt here for the tie. Gets in our shot from about three and a half millimeters away. Also good, we cut off a medal at the end. Jump over to hole seven now. Par four, 407 uh, yard shot with minus 13 wind, 13, 13 mile per hour wind going backwards. Another shot through the cactus. Here is Tiny's power, look at this, 260. Even without full power, bounces ahead of us and top spins right in a great spot there. I give Neil a terrible positioning here. He somehow not only salvages it, but gets it from long putting distance, though we are putting on the fairway. Azalea's second shot, another backspin opportunity here. Goes into the rough thanks to uh, golf placement, you know, ball placement and the wind. Our shot here, I'm deciding to just go full force here. We're gonna putt this, see what we can do. Long shot here. Inside, we're good, that's a birdie for us, leading into their next shot. Can Tiny get this one in? Is this a chip-in opportunity? It's close, but no cigar there, as Tiny misses on that one. We jump over to hole 14, here's another example of Tiny's raw power. Not full one, top spin, bam, look at that. In the fairway, only 133 yards to go for Azalea. We gotta go full, look at this, comparison time. Full power, top spin, not even close to where Tiny is which is a bad sign. Neil's shot here, this one's a, not a great shot, I'll be honest, the dunes is where you start to see the cracks in the AI, uh, but so far has been doing well. In fact, if I had to grade this specific match play situation, I would say Neil's play was better than mine, uh, though we, you know, the highlights come from from me, unsurprisingly. The highlights aren't very, uh, they aren't a thing when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to the AI, is we're able to get that chip and birdie there. Uh, I don't even go max backspin, I just go regular backspin. Tiny shot here is short, which means, not sure what happened to the game here. Uh, tiny shot is short though on this one here, meaning that it's an unfortunate loss for uh, Tiny and Azalea. Yeah, I think the game was, was really acting up at this particular moment. Not 100% sure why, but we're gonna let it slide. And part of the reason is for that is because I unfortunately edited this in a very weird way. There we go, that's fixed. I edited this in a weird way where it's already edited, but I'm doing voiceover afterwards, meaning that I had to keep that in, otherwise I gotta move everything, which makes it much more complicated. Anyway, a victory again in match play means the only thing left is the links, and this is where difficulty lies in. I was trying to find that moment. Where is that point where things finally break to complication for us? And that would be at the links. The links become complicated because as we head over there and start off the Lynx tourney itself, this is where the AI fully falls apart for me, um, for better and for worse. This particular situation, it's for the worse. We'll talk about that as we get into this. Let's go hole number one here. Um, first shot, 20 mile per hour wind going forward, which is good, a par four, 416 shot. This is us with max power, well, it's almost max power. Uh, super top spin here. I'm very bad at keeping track of my power as well. I miss up on multiple, on multiple occasions in this one. Um, and Neil, this hole is pretty good, all right? 
Low distance here takes advantage of the win, gets us into the green, which is great. But if you look on that scorecard there, I don't show all of them. There's a lot of bogeys on there. Uh, and I'm not going to say Neil did all of them, but I'm going to say that Neil did a lot of them. In fact, here's a perfect example. Final hole, hole 18 is a par 4, 461, 18 mile per hour win. First shot, not good. Look at that, poor power. We could have gotten, we could have gotten around or over the river. Uh, but we're not able to do so. I burn through my last power slot here, land right into the rough, which isn't great. But Neil can get it. You can see Neil can get this one, right? He goes for it, gets into the rough. I have to try to do max, you know, power back, you know, back spinning powers here. I don't even try that. I think I just try to get it in. Doesn't get there. Put, putting in for bogey, and that's that's not even the worst hole there. This one we end up at par. Next best is at plus two, which is good, but this was already a complicated hole, right? Again, like I mentioned previously, if you get below par, you've got a shot of placing. We got very lucky that everyone else was very poor on that one. As we're able to win, the Lynx Tourney here, another credit sequence shows up. The credits show up four times in this game, which is um, a thing, uh, but we've seen both of them. Neil barges in like, yo, we done won the doubles cup. Let's go. I'm the GOAT. You're the GOAT. Does this mean we need to split up? And then I said, no, because there's still post game to do. And also the main game, because there's one final thing to do in the main game that we haven't yet. Again, like I mentioned, the post game will be posted. If you're watching this, the day it comes out tomorrow. If not, you just wait until the end credit scene and the post game will be posted on there. But there's one final matchup that we need to do. We need to go against Kid, our, you know, our, our boss, the former GOAT, and Gene who might be the swaggiest player in this game. But now the Gene's bitter. I don't need challenges like this to stir up nasty. This is how I feel like Gene talks. Of course, this being a GBA game from like the early 2000s, uh, doesn't have volume, or doesn't have voice actors or anything like that. But this is hard because Kid can hit it like a rocket. Gene can also hit it like a rocket. Again, here is Kid basically flexing the fact that he's got better distance even without full power. Um, using the power of the fast track. And you'll see Gene and his control and his ability later on. Another thing I wanted to mention as well, because I haven't mentioned this, the music in this game, very good. The Lynx track, this particular track you're listening to right now, which is, I think, the uh, the doubles match track uh, for the Lynx. I don't know why I love this so much, but I do. It might just be like the the like the techie feel that the start of it has, but it's, it's fun nevertheless. A bar shot here by Gene, uh, by, sorry, the Gene, it's like, it's like Ohio State. It's like the Ohio State. Anyway, uh, they win. They, they tie us with that. We go over to the second hole. I wanted to show this one off. Me trying to properly align this. Again, a poor power shot here. Trying to just take full advantage of, of the fast track while not jumping into the out-of-bounds area. And then Kid deciding, you know what? I don't care about you and your struggles. Let me show you my ultimate power, which is a near 300-yard shot. In fact, kid, I, I maybe they showed this in the gameplays I've done on, uh, for this one. You might see this in the large recording, but I know in history I have seen kid hit 300-yard shots uh, like it's nothing, and that terrifies me. Speaking of terrifies me, here's Gene with a double with a max top spin that gets them not only on the green but a great shot. Meanwhile, we, thanks to Neil's shot into the Heath, uh, have to struggle to get anywhere close to this area. Uh, Neil's second shot here, good shot. Gets close. It pales in comparison to what Kid and the Gene are able to do. This, they're choking on purpose. They're taunting us. They say, we don't want this eagle. We'll just take the birdie. They're lining this up so that Kid can take the first stroke on the third. I know this. I, on the third hole, he can take the first stroke. He's planned this out perfectly. Jump over to the seventh hole. Us, big power shot, 16 mile per hour win. I'm just crossing my fingers we can stay on regular zone. Meanwhile, the Gene doesn't even try to go for full power here and still uh, struggles. Yeah, this is the fun part. This is where the AI, I get to show you finally, uh, the AI messing up. They go backwards. They do this sometimes and it annoys me every time when it's on my side, but I love it when it's on the opponent. Kid decides to go backwards because that gives him the best opportunity. My strategy has always been go forward. Worst case scenario, you get like two yards ahead, but you're still cl closer to the hole. Um, and this ends up, as you might expect, with them getting a, a, an above par shot and us getting a par shot, I believe on this case. You can see the uh, the super backspin here trying to get it. We get a pin shot. This happens a lot when you try to aim it and it's a downside because when you pin shot backspin, it jumps back tremendously. Our par shot here, they would have had to go for double bogey. Smooth sailing, it's great. 
It's perfect. And then Karma comes back to bite me. I think this is the very next hole. It's hole number eight, par five, 492 with a 20 mile per, uh, per hour wind going to the left. Uh, first shot, good. It's on the semi rough, which isn't great, but we'll, we'll take it. Kids ne uh, next shot, first shot here, fast track right behind a tree. I think this is great. Neil, in his infinite wisdom, decides to go backwards here, despite there being so much space in front of him. This is where the AI, I'm just like, gosh darn it, the AI in this game sometimes, sometimes just like, ugh. This one here, you think they go backwards? Nah, the AI decides, let's just go between the trees because we can do that, right? You know, what are you gonna do? Neil shot here on the fourth stroke, um, decides to go basically nowhere very quickly. Their next stroke, we're already, we're, we're at par four. I'm not gonna be able to chip this in unless I get very lucky. Their next stroke here, giving them a birdie opportunity is basically right on par. I'm crossing my fingers I can somehow get this in and like get very lucky. Don't time the wind right. Birdie putt here for the win on this particular matchup. And it's in on this particular hole. And they are keeping track with us. We jump over to hole number 12 at this point. Neil, um, I don't know what that was, but that was something on the semi rough. And the Gene, I think, is taking this one. Uh, better shot and uh, doesn't get anywhere either. So now the AI has decided to fully quit. Uh, me, being the only good player on this course right now, decides to go for a, a good shot here. Super top spin, stay on the fairway, try to keep us in the fast lane, get additional yardage, get that much closer, take advantage of the win. Kid, uh, aiming for the Heath right now, gets in, gets there, bounces through the Heath into the, the fairway, because you know that, that was the strategy the whole time. I don't know how, but that was the strategy. Anyway, next shot here, a four iron shot, gets in and out of the bunker, following up with the Gene. His shot here, going for a bounce near the hole, and it is ultimately successful. That's like five feet, four feet away. Uh, us trying to get the backspin win here, because we're gonna need it. I get the flag shot, those are harder to get. That basically is where the golf ball gets caught up in the flag and falls right into the hole. It's one of those pixel perfect things, somehow works, and that gets us a tie. Jump over to hole 15, a par three, 138 yard shot with an 11 mile per hour wind. Super backspin my way next door. Kid, gonna have to get close here because at this point, the game is very close to us for the win. Kid gets into the green, just like us. Well, in the fringe, actually, to bounce off the green. Shot here is just off the mark. Birdie putt for the win, Neil. Smooth sailing. When it's a par when it's a putting shot, you know my partner got it down pat. And that is another successful win there. Five up. You can see right now, still level one. Neil at level 37. Uh, we're just boosting up his stats here. He's a, he's a, he's supposed to be the all-star golf golfer here. I am not. Uh, and the gene added to the correct character select screen. We've won the champion status here. And now officially, though slightly out of order, we have beaten the main storyline. This is the end of the video. Technically, this video. If you want to see the post game where we do the mushroom tourney, all you have to do is click the video that's on your screen in the cards, or if it's not available yet, check it out tomorrow. Thank you for watching and supporting in any way, shape, or form that you do as we walk into the clubhouse. Until next time, take care.